Okay, so this is the uh, first video of this series and uh, the agenda is ICE TACAX configuration. That means we will use ICE which is primarily a radius server from Cisco, identity service engine and we will use it for TACAX configuration and TACAX is primarily used for device management. So the agenda for today is sim pretty simple. We are first we are going to config configure ICE side for TACAX configuration, then configure network devices for TACAX and finally we will do the verification from network devices and see what kind of locks we are seeing in ICE GUI. But before we move on uh, and start uh, doing the mm, groundwork, let us see what is TACAX and how it works. So this is the slide uh, uh, from internet. Uh, uh, this has a comparison between TACAX and RADIUS. So, <coughs> TACAX, RADIUS both are primarily AAA protocol that means authentication, authorization and accounting protocols. TACAX uh, is unique in terms of because it separates three element of AAA which in turn in RADIUS its authentication and authorization is, is a combined effort that means once you authenticate you get uh, the authorization for that session and it does not change over the period of your session. But in TACAX, you can authenticate once but authorize can multiple times. Again, it is more secure because it encrypts the whole packet including the packet header, username, password and attribute, uh, radius less, secu and less secure because it does not uh, encrypt the payload. You can see there are like fairly com compared on the both side. Main thing is uh, radius is UDP based. That means it is a connection list protocol. Uh, historically, it was using 1645, 1646, and uh, now most of the radius protocol use 1812 and 1813 UDP. Uh, versus TACAX is a connection oriented protocol and uses TCP port 49. Well, let us move on to see how the TACAX authentication process happen. Uh, this slide shows uh, network devices as a TACAX client and then we have TACAX server which uh, in our case is ICE server and start with the uh, uh, client sending a start packet and uh, uh, server respond and ch ask for the username and use, uh, network devices send the username, it asks for the password and if the password is uh, verified against uh, the internal identity sources and uh, maybe active directly, uh, directory, maybe the identity sources on ICE itself and based on that mm, TACAX uh, server uh, provides accept and reject final status. For the exercise of this lab we have this uh, simple following use cases. So, in this lab we are going to have a user called network admin which is kind of super admin which has all the privilege to perform all the tasks that means he has unrestricted access for the device which he authenticate. For network operator it is more like a, a restricted access. Uh, not read only access but it is restricted access that means he can perform some of the uh, uh, show show commands and uh, some of the he can shut no shut some interfaces which are really not uh, uh, that critical that means they are not trunk interfaces or so or not routing interfaces so he should have that kind of privilege and uh, for safety purpose we would like to exclude line console from all this uh, uh, TACAX uh, authentication so line console should use uh, local con locally configured username and password and should have the full access. Uh, after this uh, lab, I am going to present the device configuration, uh, but here is a screenshot of it. This is the configuration we will put on the eyes side of it. So, let us go ahead and start configuring our the first device which is Cisco eyes.
all right so this is my identity service engine I'm going to log into this with default username password okay. Okay, so this is the ICE uh, my GUI and uh, I, for the uh, ex uh, this exercise I am using a CSR, Cisco CSR cloud service router 1KV which is a virtual router and uh, I want to show you uh, if we have added that. Okay, so identity, we go to ID group, user identity group and for that I'm going to show you well uh, before we actually do that I want to show you how to deploy the TACAC uh, enable the TACAC services because the TACAC services are not enabled by default so we have to enable uh, the TACAC services so go to administration system deployment and this is the my ICE node uh, it's a standalone uh, implementation that means it's not forming any cluster and to enable TACAC services what you have to do is you have to come here and perform this checkbox that says enable device admin services and this is for uh, TACAC so please before you start doing any configuration enable TACAC on your eyes and then the next thing what we are going to do is uh, we are going to add the user because I don't have any active directory here so I'm going to add my users uh, which is network admin and network operator already added but I'm going to show you okay so network admin he has the username password and configured and that user is pass part of TACAX admin similarly the second user for, for our use case is network operator and the user itself is network operator he has the username and password and the user group is TACAX user now what I want to show you is um, go to network resources and I'm going to show you the device uh, which in turn we are using so this is the WAN CSR 1KV this is my the host device the IP address uh, which is loopback IP device profile default to Cisco and uh, for this lab purpose I have created a device type especially uh, routers I can use uh, the default profile which is all device type but I for the lab exercise purpose I'm segregating routers which is in WLC so uh, this the device type is router and um, the CAX authentication I have put my shared secret uh, key which should match on the on the device itself so this is the network device and this device is assigned to the device type what I created as routers and you can see that it is added here so we have our user device added to the eyes and now go let's go and start configuring the TACAC services in eyes so TACAC services in eyes is part of work center device administration all this top to bottom here is uh, part of TACAX configuration so just like radius we are as we start with the policy element and configure the policies for policy element you have policies result and uh, allowed protocol you can use the uh, default type or you can have your own uh, allowed protocol in your network so it by default it uh, permit PAP, CHAP, MS CHAP you can select e either one of them or all of them uh, we are going to use CHAP and MS CHAP um, then comes to the TACAX profiles I can use default cell profile but uh, this is the profile uh, up applied after authentication so I have created two uh, separate profile one for network admin and one for network operator uh, name this uh, in congestion with our user n users just to align them 
let me show you what we have we have it here so network admin is this a tech profile name command task is shell and default privilege is 15 that means it is an unrestricted user super user i can set the timeout uh, for the uh, for the uh, user i'm going to increase this and say at uh, 30 minute mm. and just go and say save for network operator let's see what we have for network operator uh, default privilege is one the lowest privilege so by default the cisco has three privileges defined zero uh, one and 15 uh, privileges can be zero to uh, 15 16 level of privileges but uh, two to four two to 14 is a custom privileges and the default privilege uh, is zero one and 15 which is like 15 is all uh, all access and zero is no access and uh, and just to uh, reiterate that these privileges are uh, covering all the a kind of like superset so um, device privilege 10 will uh, will contain all the permission from device uh, privilege 9 and extra so like this uh, and again I'm going to increase the timeout for this guy also say 30 minute come and say save so we'll define our TACAX profile. Now time to go and take the command set. So we would like to restrict the user what kind of command they can run in the network. So the first uh, is for network admin. And for that, I created a profile called full access. And full access, you must be wondering like how I can uh, specify all the commands uh, on, on the box. So it's a, e, it's a e hack for, for that is this tab permit any command that is not listed below check this box and see we are not adding any command that means permit all the command because no command is listed below that means we are saying permit all the command for this uh, uh, access level say save for network operator we would like to be uh, more restrictive so right now my net what my network operator can do is uh, permit show command obviously so this command set is so restrictive that uh, he cannot exit so uh, I permitted the exit specifically so he can uh, enter these commands listed here uh, and mind minded that I'm not saying permit any command that is not listed below so I want him to be more restrictive so you can see that uh, for our use case he can run show commands um, he can uh, permit, uh, uh, perm he can type exit, he can go to enable mode, he can go to conf mode. Um, so it's not like he's a read only user, he can do some amount of configuration. And I have chosen one interface which is uh, actually not connected anywhere. So I want him to uh, go ahead and shut and no shut the this interface. So he can go to configuration mode, he can go to interface and particular to that interface. Let's add some more commands like uh, permit command shut. Then you have to ch check this box. I'm going to again say permit. He should be able to no shut this. So command is no, argument is no shut. Let's check this box. And I'm going to say save. So user uh, command set is configured, the CAX profile is configured. Uh, now let's go back and configure the actual uh, authentication and authorization rules. So for that, we go again to work center, device administration, and device admin policy set. Just like radius policy set, and this is a policy set where you have uh, your authentication policy set and then the profiles, all right. So I can use uh, default policy set but I don't want to use default policy set I want uh, uh, my policy set to be restricted only for routers here so I created a new policy set uh, with condition is device type equals all device type router and then uh, this is the device admin default device admin let's go under it and see what we have it here so my authentication policy 
is a default one. It searches all user ID stored. That means it will search internal user, any AD, if, if I have joined any AD and uh, everything. Uh, what I am interested in is uh, authorization policy. So look at the authorization policy, how we created. We created two authorization policy, one for the operator. Uh, uh, so operator is an internal user, identity group, user group is TACAX user. So he is an internal user from uh, user identity group TACAX user. Why he is internal user? Because these this user is defined locally on the ICE database itself. Because just for the reason because I don't have any AD integrated here. And uh, uh, so this is the rule, this is the condition name. If that condition matches, what is the result? Uh, he sh uh, for result, we have two columns here, command set and shell profile. So if the user is from TACAX user, he should be uh, awarded as network operator and he should be at the shell, prof uh, shell profile level of the privileges network operator. For TACAX admin condition, a rule, uh, the internal user is again um, from the group TACAX admin. He should have full access and his uh, shell profile privileges network admin. Okay, so this is the ICE configuration for TACAX. Now let me pull 